Okay, everybody. Sorry, that banner is still up. I thought I took it off, but here I am. Hooray. Great to see all of you all. I'm back from Tucson. I'll be honest, I've taken a few naps these past couple of days because I've been a little on the tired side. But I'll tell you, um, Tucson was great. And I want to say a big thank you to all of you folks who watched our live streams, who purchased from our live broadcasts. Oh my goodness, we really, really appreciated it. I am still shipping, so you should get some shipping notifications today. Um, I should hopefully have everything from the live sales shipped by Thursday, which is tomorrow or Friday. Um, and then I'll, I'm going to start on the mystery boxes and those mystery bags that I did for the test. Um, and then I also have another live sale coming up, but I'll tell you about that at the end. Okay. So, uh, great to have everybody here. Awesome. We've got so many of you and it seems like you, um, really dig the wrap bracelets and the masterclass. So welcome to part two of the uh, masterclass with Kate, all about laddering. Today, we're going to do um, a lot of fun stuff for the masterclass. We've got, uh, we're going to talk about a uh, traditional laddering this time, the laddering with the Ceylon and usually no needles, but sometimes needles. We're going to go over, uh, how to use, um, how to do that traditional laddering, the different threads I use for it, the different beads I use for it, including large hold beads, um, how to add thread, how to take thread away and how to ladder with chain using traditional laddering. So, oh, it's great. I'm seeing that everybody is loving their live sale stuff. Great. Sharon, did you get your big necklace? I hope you love it. I hope you love it. Um, Joy, I'm so glad you like your Labradorite and Moonstone. Awesome. Um, I am excited uh, to get the rest of that stuff out for you. I've got a little bit of the turquoise left to ship. Um, but I've cleaned my studio. It's super clean. So I'm ready for shipping though. Let me tell you, I miss Christine because <laughs> that girl's a shipping machine. So, but we had such a great time in Tucson. Um, I just was texting with Christine yesterday and she says, to say a big hello <laughs> to everyone. Um, it was really, really fun. Uh, and a big, uh, thank you again to all of your support for all of your support. Um, okay. Let's get to the wrap bracelets. And then at the end of the broadcast, I'll talk a little bit about what else is coming up this week. Um, and we'll get to it. So let's talk traditional laddering, shall we? Uh, bear with me here just a second. I want to add, um, one more thing in here. So, uh, let me grab that. I need to upload one more slide. So bear with me, you know, getting back in the swing of things after a week of Tucson, even more than a week, I think. Um, it was a little crazy, but I got home on Monday. It was great. Uh, good drive. Um, listened to a lot of good podcasts chatted with people on the phone for my ride. And then I came home and I fell into bed and took a nap. I'll tell you, uh, let me be honest. So today friends with episode two, once again, we're going to explore traditional laddering beads that have a single hole, double holes and large holes. We're going to show that traditional laddering with chain and we're going to show ending and adding thread. Okay. If you missed the first episode, episode one, kind of the overview, you can go back. We've got a playlist for it on our beadshop.com website. Um, <clears throat> let me go ahead and add, whoops. I'm not sure why this, why my phone isn't, is it working? Let me, let me get it here. Uh, hang on. And let me get that, put that back on. And I think I'm connected. Perfect. And this always, always a technical, 
right? There we go. All right, we're set. Uh, let me also remind you folks that you can find all of our socials all over the web. Hit that like, subscribe, and notification button right on beadshop.com on our YouTube channel so you never miss a, uh, a, a broadcast. You can find us on Pinterest, on Insta, um, all over the web at beadshop.com. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Shoot us an email over at info at beadshop.com. Um, Andrea will get back to you right away. If you don't see an answer, check your spam folders, folks. Um, Drea really gets back to everybody super quick. So uh, if you don't hear from us, that means that either your email went astray or our email went astray. So, um, so just letting you know with that. All right. <clears throat> Let me see if anyone has any questions so far. Let me see. Um, oh, was the spa day fun? We did. We had a really great spa day. Uh, Christine and I went to the Glen Ivy spa after we drove home. We went on Sunday, took a rest, swam, ate. It was in Temescal Valley there down South. I completely recommend it. I could use another couple of days at the spa, but you know what? We're back in. No rest for those who have live sales to fulfill, right? Uh, what else? Let me see if uh, there's any more questions. Let me see. Um, just checking. Yeah, Christine did such a great job on all of that shipping. We had a great, we really did have a great time. I'm going to go ahead and um, get our house again for next year. So we've already got plans uh, going for next year for sure. Uh, okay, so let's take a look here. Um, let me hit my, my screen here and let's get into it. So Traditional laddering is the ladder bracelets, the, the really the ones that we started with. If you um, if you have kind of been with us for a while, done our laddering the ladder bracelets and stuff with us for a while, you know that this is kind of where we started with this, right? The traditional ladder. And I've got a traditional piece here that I'm working with. So just to remind you what I mean when I say traditional laddering, this is with, you know, the leather cord like we do, but we use um, Ceylon cord usually, right? And we ladder from the right to the left, as well as the left to the right. And the threads cross underneath our beads. That differs from the um, infinity stitch that we're going to go over. We're going to have a whole um, episode just on infinity. And infinity usually is with a doubled over thread using a needle going from the right to the left or the left to the right. Um, but it's just a, a single pass back and forth. Okay. So we're going to... Um, but we'll do that in a different, in a different broadcast. So Janice created, when we did this class way, way long ago, Janice did a really terrific handout called Tricks to Laddering, where she talks about all of the different threads that work, um, all kinds, all kinds of stuff, right? So let me actually, I'm going to add my screen here because I want to show you folks where uh, to find all of this indispensable, though I know a lot of you already know this, <clears throat> but let me go ahead and share my screen here real quick. <coughs> Pardon me. So I can show you what's shaken here. Okay, uh, here's my screen. So let's take a look here. Uh, I'm going to take down Janice's comment just real quick. Here is our homepage. You can see we've got a 10% off coupon uh, right now for February. I can't believe it's February already, right? And so uh, what, what I've got here for you, uh, let's take a look. 
uh, if I go over to bead shop and I go over to learning, I want to show you a couple of things. We have our stitchinary, which talks about all of the different threads that are out there. Okay. What they, what we carry, what, you know, what they're used for. That is a really great resource. We have also this, what we call the Needlepedia, right? So many needles to choose from. We talk about all of the different ones here. Very um, handy, especially for, um, for when you're deciding what to use with your ladder bracelets. Uh, we also have, let me go into projects. Let me go into bracelets. <clears throat> Let's go down to tricks to laddering, shall we? Bear with me here. We've got so many. I'm going to scroll. I'm going to scroll. I'm going to scroll. And I come here to tricks to laddering. Now here, if we just come right here, we can click on download the PDF. And here is Janice's really great handout. Now you can see kind of the evolution, that simple pearl to a multi-wrap to a multi-wrap with lots of different stones. Okay. So you can see here, we talk about a lot of the different beads, lots of different hole sizes, et cetera. It's a really great resource um, for you uh, if you haven't downloaded it yet. Okay. So let me get rid of that and let's go ahead and get this party started with this. Okay. So I'm going to set this up as if I were just starting from the beginning. Okay, how it looks, how it all works together, um, and where I would begin. I'm going to start though. Let me grab a, a, a lighter bead tray here. This bead tray has seen some love, but I know you don't mind. It just means that we've been we've been working. So I'm going to trade this out so you folks can see it, and I'm going to go across on this short way. So usually when we attach our thread to a board, and we've got that also in our, under our skill builders, how to attach a wrap bracelet to a design tray. You could use this design tray for sure. We use this a lot, right? But we can also use, which I've done and I like to do, I like to work with is the macrame board. And maybe I'll work with the macrame board next week. I don't know. You can certainly ladder on this. You can turn it to the back and just have the plain side to work with or turn it to the front and it helps you measure how long you're doing, you're, you're going with this, okay? But I'm going to use our just regular um, uh, design tray and the velvet pad here. Okay. So <clears throat> let me start. I'm going to start this wrap bracelet just like I would any wrap bracelet with a button. You could use something else like a, um, a regular clasp, uh, a lobster claw. You can use anything. I'm going to use a button because we're kind of into using buttons here. Speaking of buttons, I'm gonna just toss this, throw this out on the table and say, button live sale. That's right, button live sale coming up. More info about it later, but I'm telling you, I hustled in Tucson. All kinds of new stuff coming for you. Really cool buttons coming for a live sale. I'm going to use 1.5 millimeter leather cord. This is the distressed denim. Now I've got some choices to make here, right? When I attach my threads to this, right? <clears throat> I could just tie a knot, knot my threads in and start laddering that way. I could attach my threads by doing a silk wrap underneath. Um, but what I'm going to do, one of my favorite ways to start it is, and you can see this one's a silk wrap right here. I am going to go ahead and macrame. Okay. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clip here and I'm going to clip this button to the side. I can also use, <clears throat> pardon me, I can also use um, a little um, loop of thread. Maybe I'll do that if I've got some thread sitting here. I could use some Chinese knotting cord or another piece of leather or some kitchen twine, which I need to buy some more because I think I used all my kitchen twine over the holidays, right? So the clip that I've got for you, these are our clampers and we use these. This is kind of a, a must have when you are securing your piece to a design board in a pinch. And I think we use them for a while. You could use a binder clip or something like that. Okay. But that's what these guys are. There are clampers very handy. See, you can also do this like this. I can put my loop. See that? And it kind of holds the button out flat like this, which actually I like a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Now I'm also on this side <clears throat> as I bring this thread around this cord around, you could very simply just clip this like this right on your, your board. Now, if you're doing this for a short period of time, that's okay. Right. But you don't want to leave your clamp on your leather or it'll give it a permanent crease. So what I like to do, I'll get a little piece of like maybe felt, which I have sitting here, or a little um, a little baggy, right, or whatever. Um, Christine's asking, and this is a good question about measuring, and I'm gonna do a whole show, um, folks, on measuring, how to measure, how to figure out how much cord and stuff that you need. Um, but essentially, if my wrist, my wrist is about six and a half inches. So what I do is my wrap bracelet, depending on if it's a single strand or a multiple strand or whatever, um, I will um, make my wrap, wrap bracelet about seven inches. The more that you wrap, right? The more that you wrap your piece, um, the, 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 what I want to say, the longer, I guess, your thread is going to have to be, right? Your strands. So you can kind of, um, what do I want to say? I would go ahead and cut yourself a little bit of extra. See, there's a little bit of felt that I got here just to help it so it doesn't mark my leather. You can get a little piece of ultra suede, again, a baggy, whatever works. Okay, that, that would work. Um, Janice is thinking, let's see. Janice is saying um, for a four to five wrap, about three yards for a two to three uh, wrap, maybe about two yards. That sounds about right, right to me. Um, you just want to make sure that you have enough so that um, the leather doesn't, so, so you don't have to run out. But there are ways also to attach leather if you need it. Um, and this is asking, what about using suede instead of leather? Well, you could, however, you want this cord not to stretch here on the sides, right? And what I found with suede, usually, unless it's very thick suede, right, that it might have a tendency to stretch a bit. You can certainly experiment with different cords on the side. You could use cotton cords. You could use our surfer cord. If you do use suede, I would use suede that's a little bit thicker rather than thinner, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. Yeah, the, the size of the beads will definitely factor in length. If you, um, use beads, especially beads that have some dimension to them, like these, let me show you these bracelets here. They're pretty flat, right? 
with the Checkmates tiles, right? If I were using a bead that was a little rounder, let's say like six millimeter or eight millimeter rounds, it's going to take up a little more space. So you need to have that piece be a little bit longer, your bracelet be a little bit longer. But the thing about working with and creating your wrap bracelet, you want to try it on pretty frequently, right? We're going to do a whole show on sizing. So um, that's all I'm going to touch on for today. And we'll, we'll touch on sizing and measuring and stuff when we, um, when we get to that. Okay. So uh, the jewelry polishing cloths, Deb, that's a great tip. You can use pro polish pads to go under the clamps. I probably have one sitting here somewhere. Um, I do. This one is right here. It's actually a newer one, but you could use that. And that's a nice, um, uh, a nice little pad for your clamps as well. I also like grabbing some little dishes or some little um, triangle trays as well to kind of sort my beads into them. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this up. I'm going to use, I'm going to start with regular Ceylon right here. Okay, this is the largest Ceylon that we carry. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reel off about two yards. Okay, that's what I'm starting with. Um, it's workable for me with this, this piece. Um, and I can always add more thread. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Okay, so I'm going to find my center. Let me get in a little tighter here. Zoom in a little tighter. And I'm going to start by just doing a simple macrame stitch around this leather. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of my thread like this. And I'm just going to macrame so it holds my cords, my leather cords, together. I want enough room here so that my button moves freely. Okay. So it has some movement there, but I don't want the loop to be too big. So see, I'm actually starting about where the edge of the button hits for me right there. And I'm just going to go back. I'm going to do my loop from the left underneath up and through and tight. And then I'll go from the right. We've got that skill builder on the macrame. Um, that you can take a look at. <clears throat> I could also embellish this with some dot beads if I wanted to, to add a little bit of beading at the top, but today we're just going to leave it plain. And we're going to go, let's see, that's one, two, three. I'll finish it up. Three sets of knots on each side. <clears throat> and just so that it clears the button. Okay, it doesn't need to be that long. This is maybe, I don't know, three eighths of an inch, not quite half an inch. Oh, can you see how this loop, I don't like it. That loop is kind of funny. Let's go ahead, I'll show you. It's super easy to take out. I can't find my all anywhere. I'm gonna have to order another one. Right now I've been using this round needle file but the all is much better. It's got to be here somewhere. I'm not sure where it is. I'm just going to take this out real quick. See how that loop is really big. It just doesn't look nice, right? I don't like it. So let's take that out. Sunny, how are you? It was so nice to meet you at the show in our buddy Ani's booth. I met so many of you in Tucson. There we go. I'm tightening that up. That looks better. Um, it was really a whirlwind, you know, apologies to everyone that I didn't get to see, but it was, it was crazy. Yeah, a toothpick would work too. I've got my toothpicks right here. I'm going to need a toothpick anyway as well. So let me put that out. Okay. So let me go ahead and I'm going to start my first ladder. Okay. And I'm going to um, taper up from a single bead to a few beads just to get my space 
might get my spacing nice. So before I do anything else, let me put out a few of these beads. These are six hots. Six hots are perfect for traditional lettering because they have such a big hole. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do some needle ends on the ends of these. You could use needles. You could use the um, the uh, flexible eye needles, the one that have that little twist um, at the end. You could also use big eye needles. There's lots of things that you could use for needles on the ends. But one of my favorites is to just get some zap glue and do, do this. Sunny, that's very kind. I know we were just dashing everywhere, weren't we? That show really felt like we were just, that I especially was dashing from vendor to vendor, <laughs> trying to get everything done. It was really crazy. But it was really a fun, a fun show. Um, we had some good food some good laughs with friends. Let me see if I can get this glue out. This zap is almost at the end. Let me trade it. I've got another one here. If not, I'll open a fresh one. Why don't I treat myself? Let's get a fresh zap. I've got them sitting here. <clears throat> I'll use the dregs of that zap a little bit later when I'm not on camera. Let's get a fresh one. I have them sent to me you know, in multiples. It's always good to have a multiple of the zap glue because this really is, um, you know, it's, it's an essential for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my zap, pierce it with the lid, keep it up, right? Upright, not down. We don't want to help gravity. And then we'll open that up and we'll extrude a little bit of glue there we go. That's better. Right on down to that baggie. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and make sure the tip of that is clean. Put the lid back on. <clears throat> and I have a little cup here that I put my glues so that they are sitting up. Okay. So um, let me go ahead and about, I don't know, at least an inch or so past the tip of the thread, maybe even a little bit more. I'm going to lay my thread in there. I'm going to press my glue over the top of it, right? And I'm going to just pull that thread through. So I've got a nice coating of glue on there. Maybe I'll do it one more time just for fun. This zap really stiffens up, dries up pretty quickly. So there's that one. I'm going to put that aside. And I'm going to do this side as well. Gosh, there are people all over the place today from all over watching us. It's great to have our wonderful international beading community here, as always. Knockwood, you know, the, speaking of international community, you know, it in Tucson, everybody is there from all over the world. And Sometimes there are years when everybody gets sick. We call that the Tucson crud. And there are years when people don't knock wood. This is the year that no one got sick. At least I didn't. And I haven't heard from any of my friends. So <laughs> this was the year. <clears throat> no, I did mask. I did do some masking. Um, and I had uh, hand sanitizer right in my bag 24-7, which is why my hands are so dry. But um, so hopefully... This is the year where we all stayed relatively healthy. Um, <clears throat> I added this here in this little dish so it wouldn't glue to anything. Can you see how that stiffened up this end? It's still a little damp here. Oh, did Sam get COVID? Oh, poor buddy. Well, thankfully, I didn't. Um... Though I'm fully vaxxed, I've only had COVID once and it was pretty mild. It wasn't too bad, but um, yeah, Tucson, it's always, it's always a crapshoot, right? But thankfully this year, at least for me, was a healthy year. Thank goodness. 
Uh, so here we go. Stiffened ends, we're ready to go. So let me show you. <clears throat> Here's the top portion where I've done my macrame. I'm going to get my six thought. Now, this is what we mean when we say traditional laddering. I'm going to go underneath the right hand side of the cord, and I'm going to go underneath the left hand side of the cord. Okay. Like that so that my little loops are kind of on the back, what I'm calling the back here. Now I'm going to take my six aught bead. I'm going to go through from the left and I'm going to go from the right. See how my threads cross underneath and I'm going to tighten. I'm just using a single strand of thread here. Okay crossing over. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to go around the sides and up the middle. Like so. And now I'm ready to add some more beads. I'm going to add two beads this time, okay, because I'm going to taper up. These six aughts are nice and large, so they work really nicely. And I did this without even telling you I did this. You may have catched it or caught it. Sorry, catched. I don't know where that came from. But I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut at a right angle. Okay. Oh, thank you, Margaret. I wanted the color combo. I wanted light thread <clears throat> with a darker background so you could kind of see what was going on. Okay. So there we go like that. So see, and I just nestle that right in. Okay. So I go around the outside and up through the center. Now, some people go the opposite way. They go through the center first and then around the outside. Doesn't make any difference, right? This is how I'm doing it today. So let me tighten this up. Now let's find some more beads that, um, that fit this, shall we? I talked about using beads with larger holes. I've got some, um, big shadows right here. Can you see how large that hole is, right? Janice goes underneath and then up. I'll show you. I'll switch it out so you folks can see that too. Don't worry. And this is the, um, this is the regular Ceylon. Okay. And what set my tone for the way that I'm doing my threads is that I wanted my threads to cross behind up here at the top, okay? So I crossed behind, then came up around the sides and up through the center. I'll show you. I'll do it in the reverse way as well, okay? So decide what works for you. Um, but here is this large hole bead. And a lot of times when you use a bead that has a large hole and it sits, I mean, you could do this and it would be fine, right? across like so. Um, but you could also, with a bead hole that's that large, you could use a seed bead or something that has a hole that's a little bit smaller that you could butt up against the bead. So let's do a couple of things with that. Okay. I'm going to use, first I have to test this dot. This is an dot metal bead. And I want to make sure that my threads cross underneath, underneath it and go through. And they do. So that's good. Um, so I'm going to put on this dot, this large hole. And see how that dot kind of sits in that bead a little bit? So it kind of plugs the hole 
just a touch. Also stabilizes that bead on the thread. So see here, I've got this right here. And now I'm going to take my thread. My thread was going from the left to the right. Now I'm going to go through the right to the left. There was a question I saw someone was asking about embroidery floss. Um, you certainly can use it or pearl cotton. We've used it as well. Embroidery floss is a flatter thread, right? It implies it's meant to be uh, stripped out and used in single or double plies or even triple plies when you're embroidering. But try it out. There's, you know, thread for the most part usually is thread. And you can kind of play around, especially with the macrame and stuff uh, about it. You know, those traditional friendship bracelets that we made as kids, I used embroidery floss for that, for sure. Look at how pretty that little connection is, or that little pattern is with the eight dot metal beads and that large, um, that large uh, shadow bead. Let me reverse this out so you can see it. A lot of times what we do is we go through, and this is where I go through the bottom. So can you see how it's not I don't have a strand here holding those beads on now, right? But I would come in from the top like this and I'd continue to go. I'm not going to switch it up actually quite yet because it makes it look a little goofy. I'll, I'll, I'll stop and start it again. Okay. So here we go. Whoops. No, not that way. I come around from the outside because I need to see a stitch there. There we go. So let me put on a couple of the large hold, um, the large hold shadow beads here. I'm going to put two of these on. They will, they'll stay okay right? Especially since this thread is a little heavier. See, so there's two right there. That doesn't look too bad. But see, they're a little out of kilter here. So having those smaller seed beads there, I think makes it sit a little bit better. And see here, I did kind of screw up this laddering. I should have gone this way because see we always need to see that thread coming out so let me take this out <clears throat> might as well do it the right way send it up the middle there we go that's better send it up the middle there's my wrap around the edge and now I'll send it back through here These large hold uh, shadow, the big shadows, you know, you could use uh, it, an even thicker thread. You could use hemp or something like that. Let me do a couple of these. Sometimes when these are stuck together, you get them when they're plated um, like this and they stick together. Perfect time to use them right here. We've got some new metal beads. I saw one of my vendors in Tucson, and he had a new shape of metal bead. Janice, I'm sending it to you in your little package of things. I think you'll like it. It's a real pretty little bead. Come on. There we go. So here's that traditional laddering. Okay. I'm going to taper it down, and then we're going to start something new here. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> oh, that's so nice of you to say. I can't see who this is, but um, so enjoyable and soothing. Thank you so much. I so appreciate those kind words. That's nice. It's because I think I love to teach. This is my most favorite thing in the whole wide world. And which is why I started doing these classes online for you folks. 
Uh, it'll be almost eight years ago now that we've been doing this. Our anniversary is in October for our lives. Um, it's really enjoyable for me too. It's my favorite thing to teach. <clears throat> and, you know, to be honest, um, if we didn't teach you how to use these beads, you wouldn't buy more beads, right? No one needs beads to breathe. Well, maybe I do. I don't know. But education to me is so important. So you know what to do with your things. You can complete a beautiful piece and then move on and learn something else. Oh, see what I didn't do? See, I didn't go around the sides. Richburg, I was so busy being full of myself with my teaching. Let me do this again. Pull it through the center. <clears throat> Tighten it up. There we go. Go around the side. I didn't have to take these beads off. There we go. And now I will tighten this up. Go around the side. There we go. You could tell that was just wrong, wrong. Go up the middle and let's put this through. Okay. Oh, and that's very kind. Those days on PBS on Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels. Weren't those fun shows? They were so fun being there with Katie Hacker and whoever was filming that day. Um, they were filmed in Ohio. We had to go all the way to Ohio to, fill those, to film those episodes. So we'd usually do several episodes that day. Um, it was really fun to do. Um, a big thank you to Katie for um, all of those years of dedication with um, beads, bubbles, and jewels. Uh, evidently, not doing any techniques on camera for a flipping week has made me the worst ladderer on the face of the earth. So just bear with me here, my friends. Uh, it was a film just outside of Cincinnati. We would film just outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. Remember, Janice, you came with me once to do our to do our segment. My segment helped keep me all all together. That was really fun. I did I don't know five or six seasons of Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels with Katie. It was a lot of fun. There we go. Though I missed seeing my friend Katie Hacker in Tucson. She was very busy with um, the um, Beads of Courage. She's now the, the doing all the social media and marketing and stuff for our buddies at Beads of Courage. So it's really great to see her in that new capacity. But I'm sorry I did not get to see my friend Katie. There's that one. And let me taper back down for this short little one okay so let me get another small one go through the center <clears throat> and we'll go through okay so now i am going to finish off this strand so let's say that I were running out of thread, okay? And I needed to add some thread to what I was doing. And make sure that your tension is nice and even. Tight, but not overly tight, okay? Like that, okay? It's pretty with the shadows here, I think. So I'm gonna go around the edge and around the edge. And I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to do a macrame pass here to tighten it up. Now, if this bead is large enough, and can you see how this is, this is hanging a little funny? Sometimes transitioning from the ladder to just doing a, um, a macrame stitch 
makes it sit a little funny. Also, I wasn't pulling this up at the top. That looks better. Okay. I know I'm out of my stride just a little. I know because I'm going backwards, but I'm going to go to the right, uh, the right way <laughs> this time. Let me plug in my computer. That's what happens when you just do live sales for a week and no demos. So let me come in. Let me macrame this closed and let me show you how I'm going to add a thread. And then we're also going to reverse the direction of the laddering so you can see going the other way and I'll probably be a little less awkward with it because you can tell which way I'm used to, to laddering. But either way will work, right? As long as you're consistent. There we go. Okay, so there's my first knot. I'm going to do another knot here. This is the place to add more thread. If you haven't added thread or if you need to add thread, during this transition is a great place to do it. I'm going to transition to the fine Ceylon, right? Ceylon that's a little um, thinner. So let me grab my fine. Where did it go? So I'm going to pop down a size. Here's the fine. So I can do this in a couple of ways. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut about a yard. This doesn't have to be too long because this isn't going to be a super long wrap. I'm just showing you. <clears throat> I'm going to lay these ends in here and I'm going to, I'm just going to pull them underneath with my needle. I'm going to get a big eye needle. I mean, a collapsible eye, flexible eye. This is needle. And I'm going to send these threads underneath that little bit of macrame that I did there. Okay. There goes one, one came out, but it doesn't matter. And another here. This is about a yard, but you're going to see what I do here. This is a little trick that I do. I'm going to go underneath. Okay, those are under. I'm going to tighten this up. I'm going to come back in and cut that thread away in a minute. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a little bit of glue. Whoops. This had the typo. I mean, the zap on it. So let me turn it over so I don't glue myself to the baggie. I'm going to add a little bit of that GS, maybe about a quarter of an inch there. And I'm going to macrame over the top of that. Getting the pin back in the GS, as you know, is always the trick. There we go. And I just need to wipe the tip of that off here. And just push that back on and then sit it straight up. Okay. So now I'm going to macrame covering this. Uh, Janice is asking the super glue, super new glue. I have some of that, Janice. I've used it. Um, it's just like regular super glue. It's like zap, but it's not as viscous. It's um, runnier then zap. It's like regular, regular um, super glue is what it is. I have some here somewhere. But I use that too. Not as often as I use zap or, um, or GS because I find that it runs a little bit, right? Like regular super glue does. Okay. So you can see I've covered that. I've added my new threads here. I've got my old threads here. I'm going to do just one more. Now I'm going to add a little bit of glue here for this final ones. And then I'm going to singe this off. I'm going to use my thread burner. I'm going to put a little bit of glue there on the sides so that when I tie my knot, 
it glues down. And I'm going to add a little more glue there and there. Now I'm going to get rid of that excess with my toothpick. And I'm also going to kind of push the glue in. These strands are strands that I will take away. Because I've got my new strands, I've added them. They're underneath. Okay. Oh, do I need to refocus? Thanks, Deb. Thank you. Let me refocus here. Thanks for letting me know. There we go. That should be better. Let me get a uh, my thread zapper here and let me zap my threads away. Uh, with the glue, the, the thread zapper singes those threads, right? Um, what I would do if this were not demo time, if this were real glue making time, I would let these dry a little bit more, but I want them to be out of my way. And plus I can reuse this thread um, a little bit later down the line if I want to. So I'm going to thread that glue right in, or that thread right in the middle. Press the button on my thread burner and singe it off. Okay. So yeah, there's usually a dry time, but today in my demo world, we're just going to cut it off. The thread burner kind of melts the thread anyway, but you really want this to dry nicely. I'm going to kind of push it along there. I'm also going to singe these tails. You could cut them, but I'm going to singe them. And this method that I'm doing where I put the thread in the middle of the thread burner, I put the thread in the middle, I push the button to heat it, and then as it heats, it just pulls through, okay? You want to wait until the thread burner heats before you pull that up. Now let me show you on this side what I have here, and this is the way that I know that I've um, cut this, you know, exactly in the center. I kept this thread when I added it, I kept it looped on the other side, right? I didn't cut it. I just um, put the ends through and then now I'm going to find the center here, which is right here, and I'm going to clip this in half. Okay, so now this is ready to go. So now I'm going to do this one over um, over, up, and through, and add my beads this time. Okay, I'm going to do it in the opposite way. Let's add, I'm going to add some, these are our new, we just launched these. Okay, um, these are some new aged check colors that we just got in. This is kind of a short barrel like that that we called. And then this is the longer, the wampum bead that we carry. So it's about two to one for these. Um, do know that these um, age check, if you like them, get them. Uh, that's really all I can tell you because they go in and out of stock so quickly. Um, sometimes we get them back in. Sometimes they're the same color, sometimes they're not. So, you know, just depends. So now I'm going to go over, up, and through the bead. This is kind of my usual rhythm. But can you see here when you do that over, up, and through, your thread kind of hangs out a little funny on the top. So that's why I did it on this side. So you'll see this top one, this will be, this thread is slightly um, curved towards the bottom. This thread is going to slightly curve up. It's going to have a little bit of a different um, way of, of sitting. This is the fine, but I'm still going to use that six aught but you could definitely go down to the dot bead for this. Which side am I using? 
There we go. A dots with the fine Ceylon doubled underneath work really nicely. But I'm going to keep going with the sixes because that's what I had here. I also have not added the zap glue to these ends because I don't want to take the time to do it. But it'll be much less of a struggle if I do. Here we go. Okay. So under... like that, nice and tight. No, I did this the same way. Hang on, let me see if I can, I'm gonna take this off. Bear with me here just a second. It's supposed to be a masterclass in laddering Richburg. You're kind of flailing around a little bit. Let me bring this through. Yeah, here we go. From the back, you'll see the difference how this sits. I, to be honest, I know a lot of you love this traditional laddering, and I do too. I, I do. Um, but I am an infinity stitch kind of gal. There you go. That goes in, and then I pull that underneath on this side and underneath on this side. There we go. That's correct. You know, a couple of people, a couple of you remarked, I know, <laughs> sorry, I've got the, the Tucson, <laughs> the Tucson hangover, it's true. Um, so many of you have remarked and it was very kind of you to take the time and stop and chat with me uh, while we were in Tucson. Um, so many of you remarked that when I inevitably make a mistake on my lives, that you like when I go back and fix it. So thank you for that. Sometimes I think, oh, I'm wasting your time when I go back and fix my mistakes. But, you know, if a thing is worth doing, friends, it's worth doing right, right? There we go. So thank you for that, for that feedback. See how that's going now? This is pointing the opposite direction. Let me get a little tighter so you can see it. Okay. And thank you, Shelly, for that nice comment that it's easy to follow. I'm feeling like I'm being a little, a little stumbly, but I appreciate you hanging in with me. Let's use some of these uh, shorter wampum beads. I'll use these guys, two of these together, and I'll come in from the opposite side. Just remember when you're doing this traditional laddering this way, when we're doing it without a needle, um, I'm going to add needles to the next ones. Um, you can the bead holes, you need to check the holes of the beads that you're using, right, to make sure that they all fit. You can't have a varied group of beads for the hole sizes on these types of bracelets um, because our Ceylon just, our Ceylon is just thicker than the KO that we'd be using with the Infinity. Okay, so... You're a little more limited, maybe, to the beads you're using. Here's that wampum. Look how pretty that is. But I also like, to be honest, I like the look of the of the Ceylon threads on the sides here. It looks very intentional, right? If you match the thread to the color of your cord, it's going to blend in just a little bit more. But I like the look of this heavier thread, you know, with um, that the traditional laddering gives us. I like how it looks. The KO that we use for the infinity stitch is a little bit thinner. So what I try and do with KO is I like to match it to my cord color. If I'm doing traditional laddering, a lot of times I like the contrast of the threads. 
So here we go. And you can see there's a little bit of variation in color with these shorter age check beads, but I think that looks pretty cool. Yeah, with that Picasso, it's just gorgeous. And then I'll do this six aught. This was a six aught. I think we added it for a monthly mix or something. These are the rainbow. Let me see. I've got the blue one here. This is the rainbow nebula blue. Here's the white. This is the uh, rainbow ivory. I just think that's a magical color. I like that color quite a bit. Let me go through the opposite side. Having the zap on these tails would really help. I think, whoops, I need two, not just one. I'm trying to think ahead to my next demo and hopefully it won't all end in tears, but you never know. You never know. There we go and slide it under and pull it tight. Okay. Slide it underneath, keep that tension, and let's do this final one. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add chain on our next one. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to talk it through with you because usually with chain, friends, I do it in infinity. And I'm going to show you how to infinity with chain. But this time we're going to do it with traditional laddering. So I'm a little nervous about it, but I know you're going to stick with me. So here's that one. Here's this. Look at how pretty that little motif is too. Look at how nice that is. I'm going to go ahead and let's see everything they had. Yes, she did. Yes. Janice loved these so much and she just sent them to me. She said, here you go. We're launching these. And I was all, oh, Okay, JP. Awesome. So we've actually had them sitting for, I'll be honest, a couple of months, but we finally got them out. So um, sorry about that delay. Let me close this off. Let me do a little bit of macrame. And now we're going to add some chain in here. Okay. And we're going to do the chain with, did I say we're doing it with traditional laddering? Because we are. Let me just get a few stitches here, and then I'm going to add my threads, and then we're going to work this out, okay? So just bear with me here a moment. All right, so there's that, okay? So now, here's the chain that Janice uses this in her color study, right? This is the, this is the, um, What's this? The wheat chain, I think, right? I'm going to look at also some different chains. Maybe I'll save that wheat chain for the infinity and try a different one, maybe. I don't know. I'm feeling rebellious and that it might be a little bit easier. So, you know, the bracelets, I think I packed them all to take them with me to Tucson. But my adventure series bracelets, that's just laddering with chain. Here's one. That's all it is. Let me show you. So we're going to do this kind of the same way, right? This friend. This is just going in one direction, right? Whoops, sorry about that. In one direction this way, okay? Now, this, when I did the Explorer bracelets or the Innovator bracelets, I was laddering from the left and the right and crossing underneath here, right? So you could do either way, all right? And we can ladder with chain using traditional laddering joy as well as using infinity. I'm going to use traditional laddering today. Janice is saying do it with the wheat chain. Let me, let me just see. Maybe I could do it with both or maybe I could do, let's just lay some other chains in here just to see. This one is our, um, I don't know if this is Rustico or 
which one this is. It's just sitting here in my chain box. That's really pretty, right? Those long, those large ones, right? Um, just bear with me here a second. This one is called Rustico. And Janice, we're still able to get, now I'm worried about Rustico. No, it is, JP, I found it on my, it's right here, Rustico. Whoops, that's what it is, right there. So I'm gonna use it. I like it. Uh, you can use any of these chains. Maybe I'll use, yeah, the copper is good. You could use something that's a little bit longer too. We could use, Rustico is fine, great. Long story short, that's also a good one. This one is the paperclip cable. This would also work. Let me lay it down there. This one would also work. It would look great, okay? Let me reconfigure my space here so I've got a little more room. Yeah, I've got time, good, all right. I'm doing okay on time. But remember, for adding and taking away thread, if you can, my friends, do it in a, especially for this technique, do it at a transition point here and here. Um, I think that's the most effective way of doing it. You could just like we would do an infinity, you could bring your threads back through the beads if the holes were large enough and then add your thread back through that thread path as well. Um, but I think the cleanest way for this is, and if you're running out of thread, just end your, your section, right? These little short pieces, and no, Cindy, um, our Rustico is fine. We're good on Rustico. I was worried there for a second. Um, but let me show you how to put this, how to put chain in. I'm going to move this down a little bit more so I've got a little more of a, of a working spot here. Okay, like that. And I'm going to put this guy down here. Yeah, Rustico is a great, great chain. I love it. I'm putting one clip on one leg and I'm grabbing a clip for the other leg as well. Okay. So I've got a little bit of open space there. All right. I am going to continue to use, since I've got enough of this thread, but if I didn't, I would just add some more thread like I did up here right? I would just macrame, lay my new thread in, glue it down, macrame over the top. But in the interest of time of not taking the thread out, I'm just going to do a few more of these. And this is the fine. You could go down to micro. Like if I were laddering with this wheat chain, I might go, um, I might ladder with the micro. And the micro is see that? You can see that's a little bit thinner. So let me close this up just a little bit more. I'll start with the paperclip chain then, Margaret. She's saying the paperclip chain, how would you handle the larger lengths? I don't know. <laughs> so let's, let's figure that out. Oh, Cynthia, I'm glad that was a good, that was a good, um, well, we always learn, so I'm glad. It was worth the price of admission, right? I'm hopeful. Um, okay, so let me get my chain in here, and I'm going to start by just laddering through my chain. 
It's going to be a little awkward, but just hang in here with me. Go from the left. Now I'm going to go from the right. And I'm just going to pretend that this is a bead. Okay. I'm also going to show you some two hold beads. Whoops, what I didn't do is I didn't come up through the center. So let me do that. And let me go back through this chain. I don't know if this all may end in tears, but we'll see. I'm just treating it like a bead that has a really big hole. All right. So see, there's, there's the chain, how it sits. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath and it's kind of like it's a two hole bead. I'm going to go through the chain like twice. And underneath and this is the basic principle when you're laddering with all chains, really. You kind of have to, the operative word here is shove the link between the two legs of leather so it's sitting nice and even. And then you just ladder. See there? See how that's sitting? Let me get a little tighter. The wheat chain, um, I'll use a needle if I feel like I can't get my thread through, but with the little, um, with a little bit of zap here on the ends, uh, you should be good with that. So now this is the link that's going to sit on top. So I'm going to come around. This is that open one. So it might sit a little funny. So that's why I want to test it and see this long link. I have honestly never laddered with this paper clip chain, to be completely honest. So we're just testing it out. That's what a masterclass is all about. So there we go. That doesn't look bad. Now, let me come in I'm going to ladder this on the top here one more time. Now that this is getting a little more stable, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I can hang on to the chain a little bit more. No, it's all good, Margaret. You know, I, I like a, I like a um, challenge, you know, See if it works. If it doesn't, no harm, no foul. We just take it off. It doesn't matter. There we go. So see, I'm laddering up the sides of this loop. I'll ladder this. And I'll bring this link in right here. And I'm just going to cut this off. I'm only going to go this far. Okay? So, I mean, we could ladder it much longer. But... Uh, I need a cutter. And yeah, I could do some more of a decorative macrame stitch for this. You know, whatever. This is just a really simple, um, just a really simple kind of thing. So let me cut this one away. Not cutting the leather, just the chain. There we go. Okay. So there's my last little link. So I'm going to come around. I could even do three through here. I think I'm going to do one more. So I've got a nice tight, because these links are kind of long. I think it does look good. I might do this. This is with the fine. I would also test it with the regular. Ceylon as well, 
just for fun to make sure cross that over Oh, hang on, I got caught up because I was trying to read comments and everything at the same time. Sorry. Let me take this out. Let me take this out. There we go. Tightened. You know, I'm going to go with the two. That's two. That's two. I was starting to gild, gild the lily. I'm not going to. Um, you could use, as I said, regular Ceylon for this. It would be a little bit heavier more heavier duty. You could, we haven't even touched on Chinese knotting cord for this, right? You could definitely use Chinese knotting cord, the 0.4. The 0.4 and the regular Ceylon are about the same diameter. Come on. Who's the boss of this? There we go. Whoop that chain over. There we go. Now, just continue on. Do two more little ladders. I use this paper clip chain kind of intentionally. So number one, you could see it. And number two, I wanted to see if it would work. And I think it does. It just takes a little more time because these links are a little bit long. So you want to play around and finesse it so it works for you. There we go. There's that one. And we'll get this last one right here. And the way that I'd finish it off is I'd finish it off with some macrame like I did the others or a silk wrap or however you want to do it okay there we go all right now I'm going to bring these around and I'm going to macrame this down can you see this okay It does look cool. I love it. And you could even attach some charms to these, right? Oh, whoops, I didn't bring this across the top. Especially if your chain is big enough. This is just a short little piece of chain, but you get the idea. So let's macrame this down. And this way, and we just keep going. The last thing I want to share with you before we stop with this traditional laddering is I want to talk big hold beads. Look at how cool that looks. Just that little section, right? I love it. And yeah, a little... um. A little charm right there would really look darling or a little wire wrapped piece. But look at how cool that little section is. Let me go ahead and use a two hold bead. Um, I had some sitting here. Where did they go? Here they are. Now you could use a checkmates tile. You could use a, a checkmates bar, which I'm going to use. You could use a super duo, whatever, right? But the same thing goes for these two holes that when you do a two hole in any project, you treat the two hole bead, each hole independent of the other. So I'm just going to transition right to this one because this bead this checkmates bar is fairly thin, right? So you can really easily cross that thread 
underneath that first loop, that first hole. This would really benefit from some zap, but I'm not going to worry about it. So see, I'm going to put that right into place right there. Nestle it between the two beads. Sorry, my door is <laughs> the wind. It sounds like a haunted house in here. The wind is taking the, the door, opening the door here. Bring it underneath. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to cross them on the bottom here. And it is kind of mimicking that chain link, right? Let me, um, let me use a, a needle for this. So we can bring it this way and through. And then we take our needle and we go from the opposite way. These are just the flexible eye needles here. Okay. Make sure it's sitting correctly. Slide these threads under along the outside. And start again with your next one. Now I could alternate. This might look a little bit better. I could alternate a six aught in there. So there, so it gives it a little more flexibility, right? I could try a six aught or an eight aught, but since I've got this six aught here, let's see what this looks like. There we go. Look at how nice that looks. And let's get this needle back on here. You could keep a needle on both sides. I don't know why I'm not doing that. Sometimes this little needle flexes down and you can just reopen it with your awl or your tip of your pliers or whatever, or in my case, the toothpick. That goes through. And we'll do this side. And then we'll take a look at what we've got. We're going to go over um, closures and we're actually going to go over starts and closures and stuff on a future masterclass broadcast. So don't worry. I know you're thinking, well, how are you going to finish this, Kate? Well, we'll we'll deal with that. We'll kick that can down the road just a little bit. But basically what this episode hopefully is teaching you is which threads to use how to incorporate the different beads, how to use a little bit of chain. So this is only episode two in this series. If you missed episode one, you can go back to the playlist, the masterclass playlist, and watch the first one, and then re-watch this one. Come on through. What's stuck? Somebody's stuck here. There we go. And now we'll do this side. Traditional laddering with two hold beads is a little, can be a little tedious. You want to also make sure not to split the threads as you go back for the second pass. That's going to give you some trouble too. But it definitely can be done and it definitely looks good. I love the way two hold beads look. Oh, see what I did here? Look what I did. I didn't go around I didn't go around the leather. 
Can you tell I'm not the best traditional ladderer? There we go. But it's easily remedied. I saw that little line of thread right up next to this bead, so that's how I knew it looked funny. There we go. And tuck it in there so it looks nice. And now we're ready to continue on with this. There we go, like this. This is, yeah, two needles could certainly help. Sometimes I want to use two needles, they fall off anyway, so I have to, I'm always putting them back on. This is the Frost Opaque Glaze Rainbow Ivory. That's what this is. I love it. Okay. So beautiful. I love it. Let's take a look at how this looks. For our double hold beads and our button and stuff. No, I'm pretty pleased with it. And yeah, I'm just complaining about myself. So that because I, I like to have everything go perfectly according to plan. <laughs> but let's take a look. But you know, we all are learning and working out the technique. So don't fret about it. Here's our regular, our laddering where we started attaching it to our button. We use the regular Ceylon here. I used six aughts, tapered up and back down, did a transitional space with the, the macrame, added some fine Ceylon underneath there, glued it, did the laddering with the fine, came in and did a transitional macrame, did a little bit of laddering with that paper clip chain, and then transitioned again and did a little bit of laddering with multiple hold beads. Yes, Janice, I'm so glad you like this chain, even in short little increments like this. Doesn't it look nice, right? And you can see this is already about one wrap. So this length is about six and a half inches. It'll be about seven inches with the finish and with the and with the loop. Okay. Yeah, the tiles, I think these little um, Checkmates bars look really cool. And you can taper up. Um, I think it's three of the Checkmates bars equal one of the Checkmates tiles. Okay. Super fun. So that is where we are with the master class today. The button I use, Janice, is that old, the old coin button, which I really like a lot. I like this one a lot. Um, uh, will that size of chain bend? Yeah. So see here, see how the bracelet you can see as it goes around. It's not that. Let me bring it to the side of my wrist so you can see it bend. Let me flip it over. I think it bends just fine that way, right? I would also try it with this Rustico. I think the Rustico would look great. We will go ahead and do this wheat chain. We'll ladder with that in the infinity class as well. Okay. So um, let me tell you, let me put myself up here. So, whew, we got through that masterclass part two, traditional laddering. So fun. Um, I am going to be back tomorrow is Thursday. Today is Wednesday, February 7th. If you're watching me live, tomorrow is Thursday, February 8th. Um, I um, am going to be doing a wrap up live sale from Tucson. I meant to email you folks who are waiting for baskets. I meant to email you yesterday. I just ran out of time. I'm going to email you today so you can decide if you like the, the basket that you requested. I had to substitute some colors, but I'll show you what it is. If you like it, buy it. Great. If not, I'm going to put it in the live sale tomorrow. I've got some more baskets. I've got some indigo. I've got some mud cloth. And I've got some earrings. I'm also going to add some check glass hearts 
that I found. So it's going to be a little bit of a twofer. Um, I don't have a ton of stuff. It's going to be a little more, you know, not a giant sale, but I think you're going to love it. It's kind of a wrap up Tucson um, live sale for you. Uh, so check your newsletters tomorrow morning and I'll go ahead and schedule it so you can set yourself a reminder. Okay. Uh, because I have to catch up with all of this shipping. <laughs> so I can't, I can't sell too much for you folks, but it'll wrap up. And yes, Stem Hilly, I got mud cloth just for you. I'm keeping one for me. I did. I just kept one because it's beautiful. I'll show you. I laundered it. I laundered it actually to test it out. I laundered mine in the, um, in the washing machine. It came out beautiful. So great. I'm so, so glad. Um, so thank you, my friends, for joining me today for Masterclass Round 2 of uh, the Wrap Bracelet Masterclass. I will be back on the first Wednesday uh, next month for part three. Um, and just as a reminder, friends, if you loved this masterclass with me, you can join me for my trip to France, where we're going to do the masterclass techniques from our first masterclass. We're going to make a really amazing, fantastic, uh, big necklace, and we're going to design, we're going to talk about design. We're going to go on adventures in the French countryside. It's going to be amazing. I have just a couple more spots left in this um, retreat, uh, and the retreat, uh, that's coming up for us in August, our regular retreat. We're going to have info about that coming up for you soon, but I'd love, love, love for you to join me in France. Uh, there's more information on the homepage on our website on beadshop.com. Other than that, my friends, I'll see you tomorrow for a live sale Friday for a free tip Friday. We're back. I'm back from Tucson and it feels great. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends, and I'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.